So basically you heard. So when I was in building 37, I had gotten to beef with this police. Like I told you, I was catching tickets. You heard? So um, I wasn't supposed to be coming out my queue, but I would do shit like go to the bathroom. My niggas would be in there. We'll meet up and we had a big ass bathroom. Showers, masks, stalls, sinks, and had a door you could close. So you really couldn't hear in there. So we used to be up in the bathroom bugging. Know what I mean? Just play fighting. Know what I mean? Just bugging the fuck out. I used to be in there trying to work out, doing pull-ups and push-ups and shit like that. And I wasn't supposed to be out my cube at all. So the police used to be running down like, yo, don't let me catch you out your cube hanging out in that bathroom and shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I used to be like, yo, this nigga, this nigga right here on my balls. You heard? Hated this dude. So one day I was in the bathroom for like an hour. You heard? And he wrote me up. He, he like, yo, I'm writing you up. Now I mean, you violating like you, you, you supposed to be in your cube. You've been in there for an hour playing around. So he wrote me up a ticket, right? So I was tight. I'm like, yo, and I was just about to be finished my 30 days lockdown or whatever. So I'm like, Dan, this, I'm like, yo, Dan, this nigga hating on me. Like, I'm about to finish my 30 days. He writing me a new ticket. I'm in the Bronx. This, this Pelham Parkway projects, projects big as hell. I don't know if this is the biggest projects in the Bronx though. Leave a comment if you know what the biggest projects in the Bronx is. You heard? I'm like, yo, this dude hating. Like, you feel me? He see me about to get off my 30 days. He want to write me up a ticket for another 30 days like so i was so tight bro like my pen game is nuts like i'm gonna keep it real with you like they say the, the pen is mightier than the sword it's real like my pen game is bananas like i write so i sat my ass down and i wrote the crazy letter the crazy appeal letter on the ticket you heard the crazy appeal letter and i was i was and even though i was guilty the way i wrote that up it was so crazy that they overturned the ticket. Very rare occurrence in the state of New York. But some captains and sergeants and stuff like that, they keep it official. If you got grounds on appeal and your joint makes sense, they'll they'll overturn the ticket. So they overturned my ticket. So boom, I co he comes in the next day. I'm off a of QB Cube. You heard? I'm off a of QB Cube. So he sees me. He like, he like Johnston. What you doing out? What you doing in the day room? You supposed to you on you on keep you on you on QB. I mean you on restriction. So I'm like, no, I'm not on restriction. He was like, I just gave you a, you just got a ticket. I said, go check the log. Cause they tell you in the log who's on restriction, who's not. So he went and checked the log. He see my joint got overturned. He tight. You heard? He gets my, he gets his hands on the appeal and reads the appeal and see that I just I just threw a bunch of game in there to beat the ticket. So now he tight. Now it's on between me and him. You heard? So now another ticket gets served to me. I'm like, what? Where this ticket come from? Like, like I said before, a ticket is an infraction. It's when a, a CO writes you up for doing something you're not supposed to do. And they'll give you 30 days loss of rec, 30 days loss of packages, commissary, whatever. You heard? So, so this nigga writes me, this nigga writes me a ticket up fabricating a whole story of something that I did that I didn't do. You heard? And they find me guilty. You heard? They find me guilty. So now I'm tight. I'm like, I fronted like I wasn't guilty before. Karma. Shit was, shit was karma though because I fronted like I wasn't guilty before and I beat the ticket. Now, this nigga got me found guilty for something that I completely didn't do. You heard? So now I'm tight, my nigga. So now... I'm doing all, me and this nigga just going back and forth. I'm dropping grievances on this nigga. Every once in a while, I would speak to a family member when they sent me like a Christmas card or something with their number and say, please call me. So people like my aunt Cindy, I was telling her what was going down. She was like, I'm gonna call up to the jail. They can't be doing stuff like that to you. So I had my aunt call up to the jail a couple of times and shit to, to complain about this dude. So yo, it was wild, bro. And I mean, me and this dude was going back and forth. He was writing me up tickets for any little thing. Like he see me do any little thing that, that was against the rules, he write me up. And I'm like, yo, niggas is like, yo, son, they trying to get you out of jail. Now, I mean, you got to stop beefing with this police. Me and this nigga was going to war, bro. I still remember his face and all of that. He looked just like, um, um, what's that nigga name that played in American Psycho? Um, forgot son name, man. Leave a comment if you, if you know who I'm talking about. Son that played Batman and, and American Psycho. I don't know how I can't remember his name right now, but he looked exactly like that nigga. You heard? 
me and this nigga was beefing, dropping slips. He was fucking writing me up for tickets and I was writing grievances up on that nigga so much, bro. Shit was ugly. He hurt, but the war was on for a minute. Then niggas in Camp Gabriel, like I said, my nigga, these niggas is crazy. Niggas started thinking they was in the town, you heard? These niggas start thinking they was in the town. Basically, commissary, right? Commissary was right under building 17, which was another outside clearance crew building, right? So commissary was on the first floor and then the rest of their floors was, you know, inmate population. We ain't have out in our building, it was just all inmates from the first floor up. But in building 17, it was commissary on the first floor, like a commissary store on the first floor, and then the rest all inmates, so boom. What these niggas did, like I said, my nigga, this is an outside clearance crew, um, it's an outside clearance jail. So niggas was constantly breaking into houses, stores that was closed for the winter time. Niggas was breaking into them shits, my niggas stealing boxes of box cutters, boxes of double-edged razors. You heard? Double-edged razors, small box cutters, fat box cutters. Niggas was stealing all of that and coming into jail selling them shits. You heard? So nobody had a makeshift prison shank or, or razor in Camp Gabriel. Niggas would just buy a box cutter from off an outside clearance crew. You understand what I'm saying? So everybody was armed up. Niggas was armed up next level. You heard? So boom. So these niggas from the outside clearance crew in building 17, these niggas steal a saw. You heard? These niggas steal a saw and smuggle a saw back to building 17, my nigga. Niggas go in the room, is a room that was right over commissary, like a two-man room or whatever that was right over commissary. My nigga, niggas soared through the floor in the room and through the ceiling of commissary and burglarized the commissary in jail, you heard? Niggas took like 200 cartons of cigarettes and like a thousand dollars in stamps. They ain't try to take the food and all of that shit because they, they knew it was too much. These niggas took all the fucking cigarettes, cartons of cigarettes that they had in commissary and a row of stamps like this. That's a federal offense, my nigga. You dealing with the postal service. Niggas stole a row of stamps like this. You heard thousands and thousands of stamps. Know what I mean? So boom, niggas already like, when it went down, niggas was already talking around the jail like, yo, son, niggas fucking broke in the commissary and took mad shit, my nigga. They about to go down, real talk, niggas about to go down. So the whole jail buzzing, this on the weekend that niggas did it. So for two days until commissary opened back up on Monday, the jail don't even know what time it is. Or most of the jail don't even know what time it is, you heard? So niggas, niggas is running around the jail with hundreds of cartons of cigarettes trying to sell them shits to niggas and stash, but niggas don't want no parts of that. Niggas like, I'm Gucci, bro. I'm good. Get that shit away from me. So I'm in a dorm. One of the niggas that was in my dorm has something to do with that shit. The nigga comes in my dorm. He like, yo, son, I give you five cartons of cigarettes if you stash 10 cartons for me. No, thank you, my brother. I'm Gucci wallet. You heard? I'm Gucci wallet, nigga. I'd rather smoke top than smoke them hot ass motherfucking cigarettes from out of commissary, nigga. I'm good. Niggas had so much cartons of cigarettes, my nigga. Niggas couldn't even find a place to stash them. They couldn't even find enough niggas to help stash them shits. You heard? So they in the yard trying to stash shit in the yard. Not me. They in the gym trying to stash shit. It ain't working, bro. It's too much shit. You heard? So niggas is like, yo, these niggas is gonna go down. My nigga was like four of them, you heard? And niggas from other dorms had shit to do with it, but it was building 17 niggas that actually saw it through the through the through the floor and um through through the floor and the ceiling of commissary, you heard? So bro, real talk, these niggas is hot boxes. Niggas is staying away from these niggas. Like, yo, I'm good with these niggas. They hot boxes. They think they, they in the street. Niggas doing burglaries. They bugging out. You heard? So, like I said, the nigga who, who was trying to get me to stash to hold five, um, to give me five to hold ten, he in his cube with like 20 joints, 20 cartons in his cube. You heard? With like $300 in stamps. You heard? These niggas is bugging. 
So niggas is staying far away from these niggas, bro. Because niggas know what time it was. You heard? Monday night rolled around. Monday came through. They found out niggas broke in the commissary. Niggas seen that hole in the ceiling and all of that. They, they went right to the room where the shit was. They tried to cover up the shit with some shit or something on the floor. I forgot what they did. Now I mean, niggas went right to them niggas' rooms like this. What the fuck is this? Everybody went down. You heard? This was the first time a nigga in my in my spot who had the joints. This was the first time in my life I ever saw detectives from the streets come in a jail and arrest a nigga. You understand? These niggas got arrested for burglary in jail, caught a new burglary charge, caught a new felony in jail, my nigga. You heard? I'm sitting in my cube, minding my business. We in the back. All of us, the whole broke ass mob. We ain't had nothing to do with that shit. We knew better. You heard? We sitting in the back. I just see two niggas come through in the dorm with suits and shoes on and shit like that. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is that? Niggas come through. Niggas like this, flashing the badge. Yo, you under arrest for burglary in the first degree, ba 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 ba. Niggas just reading down the mo niggas just reading this nigga his rights in the dorm, my nigga. Threw the nigga in cuffs, took that nigga out the dorm, took that nigga to the local police station, my nigga. Charged that nigga with burglary. Word, so like four of them niggas got charged with burglary Like nigga in my dorm and like three of his mans Maybe four of his mans, I'm not sure But niggas definitely caught burglary charges And caught new felonies in camps when they was about to go home You heard in a year or so, a couple of years Niggas was bugging out, bro Like I said, Camp Gabriel was different I see dudes leaving comments Yo, I was in Camp Gabriel in 2003, 2004 And none of that shit was going down Exactly, my nigga it wasn't going down in 2003 and 2004. It wasn't going down then. But in 1995 and 1996, nigga, it was no holes barred in that motherfucker, you heard? They probably eventually got the, got the drift and started getting the shit together. But back then, nah, nigga, that shit was new. That shit was new kids on the block, you heard? Dudes was out of control. But yeah, man, building 37. It was the worst building, but it was the most fun, you heard? It was the most fun. Shit was crazy. We had this one dude in our dorm. This nigga used to snore. Son, word the mother. Nigga used to sleep next to me. This nigga used to snore so loud, my nigga. Nigga was keeping up the whole dorm. We in an outside clearance work dorm where we got to be up at 6, 5 in the morning type status. This nigga motherfucking snoring like a motherfucking grizzly bear all night. Got the whole dorm tight, my nigga. Niggas is like, yo, niggas is ready to beat this nigga up and run him out the dorm. I'm like, nah, we can't do that to that nigga, man. Nigga got a snoring problem. And and literally, some was scheduled already to go to Al some was already scheduled to go to Albany and have a surgery for this shit soon. You heard he was gonna have surgery in his nasal passage or whatever to stop some from snoring so crazy. Cause this nigga was keeping up the whole dorm, my nigga. Niggas was stressed, like, yo, son, I'ma bash this nigga in the face with a bar of soap and a sock, my nigga. Niggas like, yo, nah, chill, son. He was a fat, he was a fat Spanish nigga, you heard? Shit looking brazy out here. Y'all looking brazy out here in the Bronx. Helen Parkway shit is big. Niggas projects is big. Real talk. But yeah, you heard? This nigga was snoring like a wild mongoose, you heard? Niggas was like, yo, this nigga gotta get out this motherfucking dorm for a fact. Word, dudes was on edge, ready to pound son out, you heard? And son, and, and during the day, son was a mad cool dude, like, everybody liked him. But when them lights turn out and he go to sleep, nigga, dungeons and dragons in that motherfucker, you heard? Niggas was like, yo, this nigga gotta go. During the day, he's like, nah, puppy cool though, man, he a cool dude, man, I like son. Nigga go to sleep, start snoring. <sighs> nigga used to be like. <sighs> <sighs> Niggas used to be like, nah, this nigga got to go, son. Word the mother, son, I'm going to smash this nigga out, my nigga. I got to get up early in the morning, son. Real talk, my nigga. This nigga was the worst, you heard? When they packed that nigga up, they finally packed that nigga up and sent that nigga to Albany. Niggas was celebrating like, yeah, nigga. They got that fat nigga out of here, you heard? Word up, my nigga. This nigga was sounding like a motherfucking, this nigga was sounding like Puff the Magic Dragon every night, like. <laughs> Niggas like, yo, 
Yo, word to mother, son. This nigga cool, but he gonna have to get up out of here, son. Word to mother. Niggas was dropping slips on that nigga like, yo, can y'all please get this dude out of here before the whole dorm jumps him, stabs him up, and beats him up? Because nobody can get no sleep with this nigga. Real talk. Like, shit was crazy, bro. But yeah, Camp Gabriel was out of control, my nigga. And I did some dumb shit. And ended up getting kicked out the fucking jail, man. Know what I mean? And to this day, I regret that. Real talk. Know what I mean? I kind of regret that to this day. Know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you how it all went down. Because it was some real stupid shit I did. You heard? I let my temper get the best of me. You heard? Y'all stay tuned so I can break it all down to the very last compound. You heard? I'm going to tell you something else about Camp Gabriel that we was way before our time. Like, me and my bro Steve-O, like... We was so we was so heavily into this hip hop culture that we started some shit called the Hip Hop Coalition. You heard? And the whole Hip Hop Coalition was about protecting the art form from money hungry motherfuckers that just want to rape and pillage it for bread. You heard? Like, bro, the way the hip hop, the way we saw shit was going 25 years ago, damn near. The way we saw shit was going, we we was sitting in that jail writing manifestos. Um, my nigga JDL from Cold Crush, he was in the jail with us. You heard? That was my bro. I used to be juicing that nigga for old school rap stories all day. He used to be tired of me. I'd be like, JDL, come on, my nigga. Tell me about, tell me about Jekyll and Hyde and them niggas back in 82. He used to be like, yo, come on, man. Come on, bro. I used to be dragging that nigga to the yard. Yo, come on, nigga. We going to the yard. Know what I mean? And you know, son was famous back in the 80s. Forget about it. Son was famous, JDL from Cold Crush. So he used to be like, nah, man. You know what I mean? I don't want to go to the yard and shit because everybody want to come around me asking rap. I used to be like, come on, my nigga. Let's go to the yard. I'm going to keep these fan niggas and all of that off you. You know what I mean? Because everybody want to come around, son, asking son questions about the old school. You know what I mean? And I used to be like, nah, man. Leave my nigga alone. You heard? We out here chilling. My nigga JDL from the Cold Crush Brothers. Real facts. I used to be on that nigga back like a cheap suit all day to hear old school legendary hip hop stories. And me and my nigga Steve-O, we was just on some next level shit with, with hip hop in that jail. Like, like I said, we was in that jail writing manifestos, nigga, about how to protect the culture from culture vultures and shit like that. Way back in 1995 and six, we was thinking about shit like that. And now today you can see the, the game is filled with a bunch of culture vultures, a bunch of fucking uh, websites and blogs and vlogs that all they do is profit off of black death. You heard in Black Misfortune. You heard, and that shit is disgusting. But me and my dude Steve-O from Uptown, you heard, we was in there starting the hip-hop coalition, my nigga. If I wouldn't have got sent out that jail, we'd have got it done. We was starting a hip-hop coalition. Where we, was, we was writing out rules and, and shit that, not me, niggas had to follow in order to rep this hip-hop shit. You understand what I'm saying? This is when Biggie and Pac was going to war. You heard? And we saw how shit was getting deteriorated and how niggas was just in it to profit off of violence and money and beef between rappers. We saw all of that. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what's going on to this day. Nigga, niggas is just making money off of rappers killing each other and reporting on it. That's why you don't hear me talking about none of that shit on my channel. This rapper got killed, that rapper got killed because all of that shit is getting money off of black death and misfortune. And I'm not fucking with that, you heard? So shout out to my nigga Steve-O, bro. We was way before our time and we saw it coming. You heard? Pause. Y'all stay tuned, bro, because this shit is deeper than just jail stories. I mean, this shit is... Now I mean a history of New York City, hip hop, prison, now I mean politics, um, political science, social studies, and all of that, bro. Now I mean, we different with this shit, and that's a fact. Check my Rikers Island Legends series, you heard? Exclusive stories, exclusive historic moments from Rikers Island. Never heard before stories, you won't get them nowhere else but right here. Some dudes, I can't put them on camera, so it's gonna be only audio, you heard? And some dudes' names I ain't even gonna be able to mention because that's how legendary they are. You heard, but the type of stories you gonna get here, you ain't gonna get from nowhere else, and that's facts. First time I was on the island, and I was I wasn't supposed to be on the island. I was still 15. Um, they were still 15 and under in Spofford, 
And for me hearing older dudes, like my brother, a lot of other older dudes from all over talking about the island. So I wanted to see what that shit was like. But I'm a little skinny nigga. I'm like fucking 90 fucking five pounds soaking wet. But I wanted to see what it was like. So I lied and told him I was 16. But they found out like three days later and shit. They snatched me up and took me back to Spofford. But yeah, that shit was real. You know what I mean? It was, it was, for me, it was exciting. It's like I was at Great Adventure or Coney Island. You know what I'm saying? And then as I got old, I was like, what the fuck was wrong with me? But that shit was some fun shit. But I wasn't supposed to be on the island the first time I went. You know what I mean? So now when I actually went, when I was of age, it was different because I already came in there on some bullshit. That area in Florida, so. I'm in Tampa right now. You you ever heard of 300 pounds of goo up? Nah, but put me up with them. I always need people to interview okay. for Dirty Glove Bastard. Shout out Dirty Glove Bastard. They, they was on off the porch. Okay. So, um, that's super dope, super dope. Uh, they got signed to Ultra Music. Okay. Uh, they got the big ass EDM festival, but they also have a, a rap side of the label called Payday. So, um, I know Payday Records. Yup. So they, they they was like one of their first hip hop acts they signed. So okay. they had this song called Tifus. Uh, uh, it's like spent five hundred on my Tifus. And they, they did a lot of radio play in, in uh, Tampa and Florida. That's what happened. That shit became, they didn't have a big bag, but they spent like what they had, like a little 5K or whatever on it. And somehow Lil Wayne heard the song. Ah, uh, that's always and, a good thing. And he, he remixed it on his uh, like Dedication 6 or whatever. Like this was like a year or two ago. So he remixed it and put, that was the only independent song that he remixed and put on his little dedication album. So that really blew them up. That gave them the blue check. That gave them the- He just, uh, he just did it without them knowing about it. Like he just took it and yeah, did it. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't know about it. That, that's how you do real shit, real nigga shit to put a nigga on them. That's right. how you put it on without having to, you know, you ain't, y'all ain't gotta be hanging out together and all of that shit. Just, you know what I mean? Do some shit like that. Cut and paste yourself on today's song. Throw it on your major mixtape. It's a rap. Man, Laz What's got up? on a 50 he Cent job that became the minute. official version doing that. One of my favorite oh, really? Laz stories, yeah. Yeah, way back in the days. But I'm notorious. For Not that, even on no disrespectful like shit. Just on the as you should type shit. You know what? My boy was playing me. His name is Kenny Cole. He's like one of the head, like real big dude in the industry. He was playing me. A lot of shit 50 Cent did before he got shot. And I never heard any of that music. And that shit was so hard. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's all I kinds think, of stories like that. I think like he that. was way, way harder before he got shot. Yo, let me, I was in Miami back in the days, like mad long, mad years ago. I was in Miami. I was in, I landed in a studio. We was recording in there and shit. I had met the dude Special Ed was in there at the time, but... Um, they was playing pit bull. He was playing pit bull. He was mixing pit bull shit down, and and this is before pit bull <clears throat> was ever heard of in Miami locally. He was known. You feel what I'm saying? So I was like, Yo, who that? He was like, Yo, that's this, this kid named Pit Bull. Like, know what I mean, this 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 kid nice. He gonna blow. But son was spitting straight hardcore gangster rap. 